Hey everyone, this is Rachel. Thanks for clicking on my video. And I just came in to say that they got them. Um, I just got done watching the the press conference that Cleveland Police held explaining what happened. And basically what they said is that he made it as far as Erie, Pennsylvania. And um, they're saying that they got an anonymous tip that, you know, the Ford Fusion car that he was in was spotted there in Erie in the McDonald's. Um, they said that when the police started to approach him, he pulled off. And then after a brief chase, they said the chase wasn't long, the car stopped. And um, I guess as the police started to approach him, he ended up committing suicide. So it is now over. And the Godwin family, you know, can have a little peace that the person that, you know, did this to their husband, their father, their grandfather is now gone. Now, I didn't think it was going to end this way. I actually thought that he would force the police to, you know, to kill him. You know, I, I didn't think that he would actually commit suicide. It was just something about him that I didn't think it was going to end that way. And um, as I'm on this story, I um, wanted to talk about a few things. And um, basically, it was um, some of the comments that I saw yesterday about this, this whole thing from start to finish. A lot of people were putting out a false narrative that this was all a hoax. And for someone who's from Cleveland, who has family there, that pissed me off, y'all. When I mentioned yesterday that I have family members that live very close to where this all occurred, let me just, you know, tell you how close my family members live. One street away, exactly one street away. My grandmother, my uncles, an aunt, they all live one street away. So there were a lot of things that I didn't mention yesterday, you know, because you don't want to exactly tell, you know, where your family members live and put your personal business out there, you know, here on YouTube. But I have family members that actually live one street away. I understand that when Mr. Godwin was shot, that a lot of the neighbors there tried to help him as he lay there dying. I understand that, you know, some people that I know, you know, were some of the ones that, you know, called 911 or, you know, were trying to go around the neighborhood and see, I guess, if they could find him. I, you know, I don't know. Cleveland is a small town, really. Even though, you know, um, there, there are a lot of people there, it has that small town feel. So when something like this happens, even though there are, like I said yesterday, a lot of murders there, but something like this, that Cleveland community bands together, or at least they try to. Word is put out that you know, something horrific has happened and they band together and try to help, you know? Um, and for someone to believe that this was all a hoax, you know, that I just, I just don't understand it, you know? Um, they talked about that, well, in my comments, I noticed that someone had mentioned that it looked like the video was edited but if you pay attention there is more than one video okay there is a video where he's sitting in his car and he's talking to people and he's explaining why he did or how uh, is going to do what he's doing 
there is a part where he's, um, you know, sitting in front of his employer um, and explaining that the, the woman that, um, you know, has, he claims, drove him to this, uh, you know, worked at this building. Um, then there's also the video that he actually uploaded to Facebook Live. There's that video. So when we heard this this narrative that was going out there that all of this was a hoax, people in Cleveland were, you know, were very upset. You know, they were very upset because they knew what had happened. You know, there is a memorial there. Those people in that neighborhood watch the police and the coroner show up to that location where everything happened. They watch them, you know, search for evidence. They watch them, you know, put Mr. Godwin in that, you know, van for the morgue and pull away with his body. They also watched the, you know, the aftermath of the cleaning up of the sidewalk where Mr. Godwin was murdered. Uh, they watched all of that, them hosing down the sidewalk, you know, getting rid of blood and all of that after they had did their, their investigation and, you know, um, got the evidence off the scene. They had to sit there and watch them clean up because it was so much blood, you know? So for people to believe that this was all a hoax, I think what it is is that because it was uploaded to Facebook, you know, a lot of people thought it was a joke that this was not real because like someone said, who would murder someone and then upload the actual murder to Facebook Live? Because he didn't do this murder live. He did it, filmed it, and then uploaded it to, you know, to Facebook Live. That's how it went. Um, he uploaded it after he mar uh, murdered Mr. Godwin. And then I must say something for the family. You know, to watch this video being circulated all over social media is really tearing them apart. So please do not share that video. Please have respect for the family. There are beautiful images of Mr. Godwin, you know, uh, in happier times with his family, with his, you know, children, his wife, his grandchildren. If you want to share a video, um, share those images. Uh, if you want to share a picture, share those pictures. Do not share, you know, the last moment of this man's life when he was standing there, a 74-year-old man who had made it, you know, that long in life, and his last moments where he is terrified because he realizes that this person that has pulled up on him is about to take his life. Please respect the family because that is not something that, you know, we would want as the last image of our loved one. This man was a good man, y'all. Um, you can tell by the things that his family um, has said about him, the, the manner in which his children speak, and just the forgiveness that the family has already put out there for the person that murdered their loved one. You know, they did a press conference where they're saying that they forgive him. You know, that that's what daddy taught us. You know, that's what one of his children said. Daddy would have wanted us to forgive him. So, you know, I just ask that you have respect for their family. Stop putting out the narrative that this is all a lie. You know, like I said, I have family members that would uh, live within a street. Literally, this happened on the next street from them. Okay. So this is not a lie. It was not a hoax. And now that it's all over, um, like I said, the Godwin family, you know, they have some resolution to it. 
I wish that this guy hadn't t taken his life so that the authorities could speak to him and understand what happened. But, you know, it's, it's a moot point now because basically we know that he snapped and um, he went out there and he took the life of an innocent elderly gentleman, you know? So I think at this point, what will probably happen is that the police will continue to interview um, Steve Stevens' family, his friends, uh, the woman that, you know, he accused of um, causing all of this. And, um, and they will try to put this story together to figure out, you know, what happened. And then to end this video, I want to tell you guys that if you have someone that comes to you, me and my son, we were talking about this yesterday because, um, you know, Steve Stevens mentioned that he went to his mother and his mother, you know, blew him off. But if you have someone that comes to you and, and tells you that, you know, they're not dealing, you know, well, that things are falling down on them or they feel that the world is crushing them or there's too much on their shoulders and you know they need to talk take some time and talk to them take some time to really listen to what they're telling you because maybe if someone had taken a moment and just sat for a few hours and talked to him now, I'm not defending him. I just don't want this to ever happen again. But I, I think, you know, yesterday I was eating lunch with my son and I was thinking about if my child came to me and said that he was suicidal and homicidal, you know, I wouldn't blow him off. We would sit there and we would talk and I wouldn't let him leave, you know. Um, I wouldn't let him leave, y'all. I like I said I I, I don't want to make this seem like this is an excuse for what this man did because whatever he was going through he didn't need to take the life of that man. Um, but mental health mental health issues are nothing to joke about. You know the fact is that some people can't cope. You know, and they go out and do terrible things. And maybe if in our community we took these issues more seriously, maybe this wouldn't have happened and we can prevent situations like this from happening anywhere else. Mental health is a serious issue and it's something that maybe, like I said, in our community, we need to start paying more attention to and taking it seriously. And with that, y'all, I'm going to end this by saying let's all pray for the Godwin family, um, let's all pray that God holds them up in all of this. Um, this has got to be absolutely terrible for them. And with that, y'all, thanks for watching my video. Um, you guys try to have a great day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.